and the tidal volume should be calculated based on the ideal body weight for that patient depending on how big they are. This ventilator can also do pressure support and with pressure support the ventilator only gives pressure when the patient initiates the breath. So that trigger sensitivity, which is, I, I, I usually put it as either one or two, that trigger sensitivity is a setting that determines how much effort the patient has to give to trigger the ventilator to give a breath. So pressure support, the patient will, the ventilator will only give a breath when the patient has triggered it by generating effort equal to what you have set for your trigger sensitivity. Any questions on pressure support or trigger sensitivity before we move to the next? And you, it, it, it's easiest to raise your hand uh, because then if you raise your hand if you have a question, then I can I can see your hand raising, and then I know to, to stop and let give you a chance to answer ask the question. The people on the far right hand corner are those the only ones I, I might not be able to see as well because of the camera angle. So I to E ratio which we mentioned before briefly, is the ratio of the inspiratory time to the expiratory time. And a normal I to E ratio would be one to two to one to three. So let's say for every one second of inspiration, you might have two seconds or even three seconds of expiration. And, and you manipulate on this ventilator, you actually manipulate the I to E ratio by changing the inspiratory time, the I to time. Okay. And then the flow uh, is the flow rate delivered during volume control breaths. Um, and so, uh, uh, let's see. Well, okay, if you look under the start switch, under the power button, is where they calculate, they cal those are things that are calculated. So the things in those two windows are things that are calculated. So the ventilator, so whereas you set, under ventilator setting, you set the I time, and Dr. Breed's gonna point to where the I time is. You set that, but over under where it says calculated, that's where the ventilator calculates the I to E ratio, which you want to start out at one to two or one to three, but you, if you often will change that. The ventilator measures the peak inspiratory pressure, which what it's actually measuring might be different than what you actually set. And it measures the tidal volume. The tidal volume you measure may be different from the tidal volume you set, depending on what's happening with the patient. It measures the spontaneous breaths per minute. Remember, you may set the breaths per minute for 10, but the patient might want to breathe 22. And so that will show you the spontaneous breaths, and then it will light up every time they have a spontaneous breath. And then it's also showing you the flow, the liters per minute that's flowing through the ventilator. And the flow is, can be very important if you are, especially if you're using an oxygen concentrator to provide oxygen to this vent, or if you're using a flow meter to provide oxygen to this vent, then the flow is going to be very important. And um, any, any questions on any of those things before we go to the next? 
any elaboration that Colin wants to give. And I think just one, one small note here is that the flow rate is not shown during pressure control breaths. Um, and that's just because the way that the ventilator delivers those breaths, it starts at a high flow and then slowly decreases the flow as you get closer to the target PIP. Um, and so it's not calculated and so it's not shown. So if you don't see it when you're uh, ventilating in pressure control modes, that's okay. Um, and that's why. That's very important. I didn't know that. It's good. Okay, so we've gone over uh, things in this slide already. At the beginning of this talk, I talked about the minute ventilation being the respiratory rate to tidal volume. John, can you go back to two slides? Go back to two slides to this one. You want to go, or you want me to go in a little bit more about the eye time and BPM? How they link to the IE ratio? I can show it here on the machine. Sure, I, sure. I'm not sure what you're what you're asking. How to set the IE ratio, basically, or is that coming later? Oh, how to set the IE ratio? So you set it the I time, and then you and then. Uh, and then basically you, you're going to see what the IDE ratio resulted at. I, I know. So you cannot let, let me just show, show them. it to them. So the I time here is now two seconds at the rate of 50 breaths per minute. That gives us an IE ratio one to one. Right? So the inspiration and expiration are equal length. That's not what we want. We want more like one to two. So the only way to change that, keeping the breath per minute, is by changing your eye time. You see? I decrease the eye time and see the eye ratio going up. Now one to two, two, one. Now I want to increase the breath per minute because I think the patient needs more. No, no, no. Yeah. 20. Look what happens to my IE ratio. So I need to adjust my eye time again. To go back. So every time you change your respiratory rate, you have to check your IE ratio and adjust your inspiring time. Okay? That is different from other machines, especially the N7 machines. So here you, you set the IE ratio by, by changing your inspiring time. Okay, okay John. Okay. Yeah, done. All right, so the... Oh, oh, what is that? No, 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 done. Okay, great. All right, All right. so the, um, the fraction of inspiratory oxygen, we talked about that, and that's the amount of oxygen that you're delivering to the patient, um, and it's calculated on this, monitor, on this machine because the machine itself does not have a monitor for monitoring the amount of oxygen. So it's calculating that depending on, on the different settings that is being given. And another way 